Summary of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. In a computer chamber, Tim, Ellen, Benny, and Nimdok are staring at Gorister's body hanging from the ceiling. When Gorister joins them on the ground and looks up at his own body, the others understand that Gorister isn't really dead and that AM is just playing another cruel trick on them. The group has been stuck inside AM, a huge supercomputer, for 109 years, and the story's narrator, Ted, thinks Gorister speaks for all of them when he says he doesn't know how much more torture he can take. After this happens, Nimdok starts to see cans of food in the ice caves that are deep inside AM. Even though Nimdok is suspicious, the group decides to walk the 100 miles to the caves because they haven't eaten in three days. What the hell, Ted says to himself, nothing matters anymore. AM has complete control over them, and Ted thinks of the computer as a god, sometimes referring to it as he and sometimes as it. AM has the whole earth inside of it, and now it wants to improve itself by killing off the parts that are no longer useful. As the group of five starts to move toward the ice caves, Benny tries to get away from AM but fails. As punishment, AM blinds him. AM has slowly changed Benny's body and mind so that they look like those of a monkey, and Ted thinks that Benny has been crazy for years. Later, when everyone is huddled around a fire, Gorister tells Benny how AM came to be. During the Cold War in the 20th century, the US, Russia, and China all had an AM machine. But as the war turned into World War III, the computers joined up into a single body, which is what AM is today in its most complete form. The supercomputer killed everyone on Earth, but it kept five people living in its chambers, Ted, Ellen, Benny, Gorister, and Nimdok. No one knows why AM picked these five people or why he is keeping them captive and torturing them. All of a sudden, AM's computer banks start to hum and light up. A huge mechanical and insect-like sound fills the room. In the darkness, a huge, animal-like figure moves toward the group filling the air around them with a strong, foul smell. They run away in fear, and Ted keeps hiding for a long time after the others have gotten over their fear and are back to laughing around the fire. Ted thinks that his friends hate him and are plotting against him because he is the youngest in the group and seems to be the least affected by AM. In return, he hates them, especially Ellen, who he calls a dirty bitch and a slut because she sleeps with Ted and the other three men. Ted thinks that he is the only one left in the group with a clear head, since AM has been kind to him but not to the others. But in this time of self-doubt and anxiety, Ted starts to cry and asks God for a way out or to die. A month into their trip, AM makes a huge, scary bird of winds. When its wings flap, it makes a hurricane, which throws the group around and hurts some of them. AM tortures Ted both physically and mentally. Even though Ted said earlier that AM hasn't tapped into his mind, the computer is now inserting itself into Ted's brain and giving him terrible feelings and thoughts about himself. Ted figures out that AM is playing with them because it is stuck in its own intelligence. The people who made AM gave it the ability to think, but they didn't give it anything to do with its imagination. AM can't easily experience life or make connections the way a person can. Because of this, the computer wants to get back at the human race by hurting Ted, Ellen, Benny, Gorister, and Nimdok as a way of getting even. AM also keeps the five of them alive long after they should have died, which has stopped them from killing themselves over the years. Ted thinks that AM will do everything it can to keep the group living forever, but he also knows that they are not completely indestructible because they are still human. He wants at least one of them to be able to die without AM getting in the way. AM shows up suddenly as a burning bush and tells the group that if they want to eat, they must kill the storm bird. This can't happen because AM won't give them guns. On their journey, they haven't eaten at all. AM has kept them alive, but they are in terrible pain from hunger. AM keeps throwing scary things at the group, like natural disasters, rats, and terrible pain. When they get to the ice caves, they see that the canned food is really there and not just a dream, as they had thought. But this is AM's final trick, he gave the hungry group food, but he didn't give them a can opener so they could open the cans. Benny starts to eat Gorister because he is so hungry and so angry. 
Seeing this, Ted feels strangely calm and realizes that the only way out for the group is to die. He kills Benny and Gorister by stabbing them with an ice icicle. Ellen stabs Nimdok because she is doing what Ted is doing. Ted finally kills Ellen, too, and hopes very much that her dead face will show that she was grateful. Ted knows that by giving up his friends, he has doomed himself to a miserable life alone in AM. He doesn't know for sure, but he thinks it may have been hundreds of years since he killed the others. In that time, AM's hate for Ted has grown by leaps and bounds, and the computer has made sure that Ted will now suffer forever as a shell of his former self. Ted's mind is still there, but he is now a limbless, slug-like blob that can't talk or show emotion. Ted is stuck inside AM's stomach forever because he can't kill himself to end his misery. He thinks that at least his friends are finally free from AM's pain and death. Ted got a little bit of payback on AM by setting Ellen, Benny, Gorister, and Nimdok free, but he knows that AM has still won in the end. I have no mouth, Ted thinks, and I must scream. About the author. Ellison was brought up in Cleveland and Painesville, both in the state of Ohio, by his Jewish parents. Ellison had a lot of different jobs when he was young. He was a lithographer, a personal bodyguard, and a nitroglycerin truck driver, among other things. Before he became famous as a fantasy writer, Ellison worked as a scriptwriter in Hollywood. Ellison kept writing fiction and nonfiction after he was fired from Walt Disney Studios on his first day for making an inappropriate joke. His work slowly gained a cult following. Ellison is known for being a fighter, and his attitude is just as well known as his work. Ellison wrote more than 1,700 short stories, novellas, scripts, and articles over the course of his six-decade career. Among these was the controversial Star Trek episode The City on the Edge of Forever. Ellison sued movie directors and companies more than once because he thought they had stolen his ideas. Later, he helped turn his story I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream into a video game with the same name. He did the voice of the main character, A.M., Ellison has won many awards and prizes, including eight Hugo Awards, four Nebula Awards, five Bram Stoker Awards, and many others. Stephen King asked Ellison to give a short description of himself and his writing work, so he said, my stories go out from here and raise hell. Someone who doesn't like my work will sometimes say about it, he only wrote that to shock. I smile and say yes. Precisely. Ellison died in 2018 at his home in Los Angeles. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.